In this video, I want to show how to create a simple autocomplete on our page. So in this field right here, I want to have it so when I start typing, it gives me some suggestions. I can do it one of two ways. I can embed some suggestions directly in this page, and or I can also feed the suggestions from a JSON data feed. We'll take a look at both approaches, and we'll start with the most simple first. So that field where I had my cursor is called combined name. Take a look and you notice it has an input name of combined name. That will be key in just one moment. So this autocomplete is something that we can get through jQuery. jQuery is a JavaScript and CSS library that we can use to make our HTML pages a bit more interactive. To use jQuery, I can either download the library and serve it up locally, or I can use a content delivery network just as we used for Bootstrap. I'm going to go ahead and use the Content Delivery Network, and you notice that I'm pasting in a link section here and a couple of script tags there. I will, of course, push this up to GitHub so that you can simply copy and paste that as you wish. Now comes the interesting part. We have to take the jQuery libraries, and we have to connect them to our input name equals combined name. We're going to do this with a bit of JavaScript, and we'll do it up in the head section. So let's start with the normal script tag. We'll say script, type, text JavaScript, and then the close script tag. Now we need to create a function. So dollar sign open paren, and then open paren, and we'll terminate that with a semicolon. I'll warn you there's a lot of symbols here, so I'll read them off. Uh, basically, if you're doing what I'm doing, just repeat what I'm doing. That's the easiest way to describe it. So now we do an inline function. We simply call it function, open and close paren open curly and then close curly. With We can tidy things up just a little bit here if that's helpful. Now within this we'll say dollar sign open paren double quote pound combined underscore name. I know that looks a little bit tricky but all it's doing is getting us access to this combined name input unit so that we can assign some things to it. And in this case we're going to assign to it an autocomplete and then open paren and let it close paren as well, and then open curly and close curly as well. Let's go ahead and put that on a new line so we get a bit more space to breathe, and terminate that with a semicolon as well. Now we'll say source colon, and I'm going to follow this with square brackets, and when I follow it with square brackets, it means that the source of autocomplete data is something that is local to this page. In other words, it's an array of values. So we'll say white oak, white pine, white sunflower, and finally white rose. In that with a comma, and then on the next line we'll say min length 3. That means we want to start the autocomplete when we've seen at least, at least three characters. One more change we're going to need to make. You see that has a pound symbol there. So when we come down here, that won't match up to a name attribute, but it will match up to an ID attribute. So we need to say ID combined name. Now we can save this and we can right click in our IDE and choose view and browser. And take a look now as I start typing, I can type white O and you notice that it does a nice autocomplete for me. I'm going to go ahead and commit my changes because I'm about to do this another way. Right now this works very well, but the trick is that we're using local data. And the local data is only going to be as good as the amount of data that we, that we have right here on line number 15. What if we wanted to use a JSON data feed instead? And think about that. If we use a JSON data feed, we could go get that data feed from anywhere on the internet. So I'm going to right click on pages and choose add. And then let's say razor page. And razor page is fine. We'll call this one auto complete plant names. Now if we take a look at the code behind, we can do a bit of magic here. You see that we have public void on git, but here's a neat thing. If we simply change the return type of that from void to json result, it will take whatever we return and make it look like json. So say for example we wanted to make a list of plants. We could say private, just like so. We can make a list of plant names and then we can say plant names. We can simply add plant names to this collection, and then we can return new JSON result plant names. 
And that will effect effectively wrap up this list of plant names and return it as a JSON result. Let's give it a try and see what happens. Notice when I start our application and I go to the endpoint autocomplete plant names, you see each of these plant names in a JSON array, and that's perfect. That's exactly what I need. I'm going to grab this thing right here, copy, and back to our about us, I'm going to make a subtle change. Do you see how the autocomplete currently has a source? And that's enclosed within square brackets indicating it's a local array. Well, if I simply switch this to our endpoint in quotes, it's going to know to hit that endpoint instead. Let's try this one more time. Notice when I bring up the About Us page and I type in red, take a look at what we get. Instead of getting the white oak and the things we got before, now we're getting things like Redbud. As a matter of fact, if I type in white, well, nothing's going to come up because it's now using this remote data, not our local data. One more thing you'll notice is that as I type, for example, Redbud, it doesn't actually take away any of the options that do not match. The reason is, if we take a look at our About Us page and we have this source autocomplete plant names, because it's in quotes, jQuery knows that this is a service that's re returning a JSON array to us. And it assumes that this service is going to be smart enough to do the autocomplete. So when jQuery is calling this, it's essentially calling like so. Autocomplete plant names, but then with term equals, and then whatever the letters the user has typed in. So you see term equals red, uh, but then I could say term equals red bud, and we're still going to get the same response. So we need to account for this. And that's actually fairly straightforward. Since it's a query parameter, we just go to the code behind for this autocomplete plant names and say string term, because remember term is what it's passing over to us in the name value pairs and the uh, get parameters essentially, or the request parameters. So now let's make a new list. We'll call it matching plant names, and we'll only put plant names that match into this matching plant names collection. So first let's iterate over all plant names. So you can see here the changes that I made. We're accepting the parameter term. We're making a sublist called matching plant names. That will have only the list from here that has the term inside of it. So we're iterating over the collection of all plant names, then we're going to shake hands with one plant name at a time, and we're going to say, do you contain the keys that the user has entered? If so, I'm going to add you to the subset of matching plant names, and then I will return those matching plant names as the result of this method. I've started the application so we can see the result. Notice this is our feed of JSON data. Autocomplete plant names, question mark, term equals red. Now note when I type in red bud and hit enter, Note that it only shows us red bud. If I say red oak, we get only red oak. If I say red and then a space, and the plus is essentially a space in the URL, we get only the items that start with a space. Red plus M, red maple. So you see now that our feed of JSON data is auto-completing based on that term that's passed in, let's verify that the same thing works on our HTML page. I type in the word red and I see all of the options. I type in a B and I only see red bud. Red space, red bud goes away, but red maple is still an option. And if I keep typing red maple, we're going to see that we get red maple, red oak, so on and so forth. So in this video, we've seen how to make a very simple JSON endpoint that is simply returning a series of items in a list as a JSON array. And we've also seen how to use a bit of jQuery and have jQuery match up to that array of JSON data to create an autocomplete. So I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.